gotten onto the uttermost parts of the earth. He had told them that what he couldn't tell them, the Spirit of God would come and tell them. So he said, don't worry. The Holy Spirit is coming. <laughs> I mean, he had been with them for three years. They were still asking, Will you, is it now you restore the kingdom? So I think he just looked at them and said, just hold on. The Holy Spirit is coming. <laughs> he will explain everything to you. He will guide you into the truth. He will give you power to be witnesses. Hallelujah. So what are we saying? The kingdom of God is actively being established in the earth. And pastor told us that that is what we call the kingdom of heaven. The part of the kingdom of God that Jesus came to establish and is establishing through us continually. Praise the Lord. And the kingdom of God talks about the will of God. The Lord Jesus prayed and said, Father, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He was talking about the kingdom. Your dominion, your reign, your purpose be done on the earth as it is in heaven. Look at Ephesians chapter 1 from verse 9. It says, having made known unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good purpose, this is his will, listen to this, according to the, his good purpose, which he had proposed in himself, that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, he might gather together in one all things in Christ. In other words, listen, in all things in Christ, both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him. There's going to be a harmonization of the way things are done in heaven and the way things are done on earth. He's going to gather everything together in Christ Jesus.
justified. But you are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. She's done. In other words, you have been qualified to inherit the kingdom. Okay. Oh, praise the Lord. Did you hear that? He tells us those that shall not inherit it, they are disqualified. Yeah. Then he says, but you, you are not like that. You used to be like that, but you have been washed. You have been sanctified. You have been justified and therefore qualified for the inheritance. Colossians chapter 1. From verse 12. Giving thanks unto the Father, hallelujah, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. Glory to God. He qualified us. He did the washing. He did the sanctification. He did the justification and qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. In other words, we have now possessed the kingdom. Not by our own works, but by the work of Jesus Christ. We are now beneficiaries, possessors, and executors of the kingdom. Look at verse, let's continue verse 13. It says, who had delivered us from the power of darkness and had translated us into the kingdom of his dear son. Oh, glory, glory, glory to God. We are now in the kingdom. Praise the Lord. We are now in the kingdom, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of grace, the kingdom of beauty. We are there now and we have inherited the kingdom. And Pastor made, you know, he explained a little bit there, that word translated. He said translation is not a process that when you are born again, then you are now transferred. No. That word translated is the same word used when it says Enoch was translated. He was not found. He was translated so that he would not see death. That is the exact word used here. When it says you are translated into the kingdom. You are no longer on this side, just like Enoch was no longer here. At once, you are born into the kingdom. Glory to God. Born into the kingdom. And now, I like this, I like this, I like this. Matthew chapter 13 and verse 38. It says, the field is the world and the good seed are the children of the kingdom. Hallelujah. I'm a child of the kingdom. I'm a child of, I was born there, native born in the kingdom. I was born there, hallelujah. Born into the kingdom, a son of the kingdom. Native born there, glory, glory, glory to God. I'm an heir of the kingdom. I'm a child of the kingdom. And when I say I'm an heir, it's not a future inheritance. No, it means a possessor. I have the kingdom now. All the glory, all the power. All the honor of the kingdom is mine now. The power of the kingdom is mine now. Glory to God. Do you know that you have the power of the kingdom at your disposal? Oh, glory to God. So my number one point is we are heirs. I said beneficiaries, possessors, and executors of the kingdom. Number two, we operate the kingdom. The kingdom has been given to us to operate. The principles, the language, the culture, the life. We operate the kingdom of God in the earth right now. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter 13. From verse 11. He answered and said unto them. Now he had just told them a parable. The parable of the sower. And he told them how the word of God works. So you, I'll, I'll get back there. He says he answered and said unto them. Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven. So in our operation of the kingdom, we have access to know the mysteries. And he just shared one of the mysteries with them. How the word of God works. It works like a seed. When he told the whole, you know, everybody, they didn't understand it. So he tried to explain. But when he got back to his disciples, he said, this is one of the mysteries of the kingdom. If you sow the word of God, it will produce a result. If you sow the word of God in the wrong place, you will not get the result. But if you sow it in the right place, you will have result. And you know what? You can have result of varying degrees with the word. So there's a mystery of the word. And I think about our 30 days of rain. It's one of the operations of the mystery of the word. Because the testimonies are not about a program. 
When we are sharing, te we say testimonies of 30 days of rain. It's not really testimonies of 30 days of rain. It's testimonies of the power of the word. Because we have, we have keyed into a certain secret. We've keyed into it. Now we operate that secret very comfortably. <laughs> Hallelujah. We understand how it works. We know what to do. Now we are operating it because they are mysteries of the kingdom. They are mysteries. Glory to God. It is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. For whosoever hath to him shall be given, and he shall have more abundance. But whosoever hath not from him shall be taken away, even that that he has. Therefore speak I to them in parables, because they see it, see not, and hearing they hear not, neither do they understand. You are and in hands. them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, yeah. which said, yeah, By hearing they shall hear and shall not understand, yeah. and yeah. seeing you shall see and shall not perceive. For this people's heart is wax gross, yeah. and their yeah. ears are dull of hearing, yeah. and their eyes they have closed, yeah. lest yeah. at yeah. any time they should see well, with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their hearts, and should be converted, and I should heal them. Look at verse 16. But blessed are your eyes for this. I happen to fall. And, and your ears for the You're asking about the context. Say, what blessed are my eyes for this. And, and my ears for the hair. Yeah, I see the man, mysteries of the kingdom. In, eh? I hear the word happening. of the kingdom. Oh, and it's manifested in me. There's no way of fixing this. Oh, and I'm just talking to them. There are so listen, many mysteries. Um, Matthew chapter 16 and verse 19. Like, listen, um, it says, and I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom. So they are mysteries of the kingdom and they are keys. <laughs> Glory to God. They are keys. I said we operate the kingdom of God. We are familiar with the mysteries. We operate with the keys. Glory to God. That's why I said as a Christian you have to understand that it goes beyond I was lost, now I'm found. I'm born again. No, there is a kingdom to run. There are things that should be in your hands. As you appreciate the mysteries, as you function with the keys, much more is committed to you. To the end that through you, everything in this world should be gathered together in the will of God. And harmonized with the system of heaven. Because you are the one on the, you are the, one on the sea. You are the one on earth. It is through you that the Lord Jesus reigns. And the kingdom is as far as your own dominion in your area. As far as you are able to operate is where we have gotten to in your area. Do you understand? In your family, is as far as you have gone that the kingdom has entered your family. How far have you gone in your family? How far have you gone in your business? How far have you gone in your industry? How far have you gone? That's how far we have penetrated. So you have to learn to operate the kingdom. They are keys of the kingdom. Glory to God. He says, and with these keys, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Can you beat that? You have the keys. You have the authority to operate the kingdom such that you can say what should happen on this earth. And it must happen. How far have you gone with operating that key? How far have you gone? First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 20. It says, for the kingdom of God is not in word but in power. There is power in the kingdom. So much power. Glory to God. So much power. Miracle power. And pastor was talking to us about the power, the exceeding greatness of his power available to us. What could we do with the power of God that is available to us in the kingdom? He says the kingdom of God is a kingdom of power. Kingdom of power. Kingdom of miracles. Glory to God. First Corinthians chapter four, chapter two and verse four. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in the demonstration of the spirit and of power. Oh, glory to God. Ephesians chapter one, verse nineteen to twenty-two. And what is the exceeding greatness of His power to us what who believe according to the working of His mighty power? which he wrought in Christ when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also in the world, that which is to come. 
and he had put all things under his feet. Now notice there are two things in the script. The first one is the greatness of our power. The overwhelming power of God. The second one is the authority that he gave to Jesus. And in Christ you have received both. Both power and authority. Because it says he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things for the benefit of the church. So the church is to exercise his authority. The church is to demonstrate his power. Glory to God. How far have you gone? How far have you gone with the exercise of authority? How far have you gone with the demonstration of power? How far have you gone? Is there somebody sick around you? How far have you gone? Are there things that are going the way they shouldn't go in your nation? How far have you gone with the power of the kingdom? Things are going wrong in your school. Wrong laws are being put in there. Wrong HR laws are coming into your company. What have you done with the power and the authority of the kingdom? I said it's beyond what you have received in Christ. You have a responsibility to operate the kingdom. You must operate the power. You must operate the authority. Because through you, everything in this world will be gathered together and saved in Christ. In the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Hey, it says, For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Glory to God. These are the principles of the kingdom. Righteousness, peace, joy in the Holy Ghost. How far have you demonstrated your righteousness? Glory to God. Righteousness is the expression of the will and the nature of the Father. Peace is control over circumstances. Hallelujah. And of course, joy in the Holy Ghost is that overwhelming confidence and exuberance in the Spirit. Do you know that the joy of the Holy Ghost is an exercise of the kingdom? Some people think that the best thing they can do is to always be sad and unhappy. But do you know, because the Bible says, with joy, you draw water from the wells of salvation. It says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. Something happens, and it looks like, well, what are we going to do? You say, I'm going to exercise joy. <laughs> I'm going to exercise joy, glory to God. I'm going to turn on the joy, praise the Lord. That joy is your victory. That joy is your strength, glory to God. That joy can pull out what you couldn't have gotten with any other thing, with the joy of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> So how far have you gone with your righteousness? How far have you imposed God's will and nature around you? What about peace? God gave you peace. Peace to speak to the nations. Peace to speak to situations and circumstances. Peace to deliver to the world. We are the nation that keeps peace. Have you exercised the peace of God that is yours in the kingdom? Say, I operate the kingdom. Say, I operate the kingdom. Are you following me very well? Number three. Now, I'm just giving you points. I'm trying to put different things that Pastor said in a way for you. Number three, it is a kingdom that will never be overthrown. Oh, my Liga, son Tarabashate. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 28. Glory to God. Okay, let me start from, I don't want to go too far. Verse 27. And this word, yet once more, signify the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, and those things which cannot be shaken, that those things which cannot be shaken can remain. Verse 28 is where I'm really going. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved. <laughs> the kingdom you have received cannot be moved. And that word moved means to be shaken, to be overthrown. Are you following me? To be shaken, to be overthrown, to be liable to disorder. But our kingdom cannot be shaken. Our kingdom cannot be moved. It is not liable to disorder. <laughs> we will never be overthrown, glory to God. He says, wherefore we receiving a kingdom that cannot be moved, let us have grace. Whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. See, I've received a kingdom. That cannot be moved. It cannot be shaken. It's on the rise always. It's on the increase always. It's spreading always. Daniel chapter 2, verse 37. This was Daniel's interpretation. Let me start from 36. 
King Nebuchadnezzar had seen a vision, an awe-inspiring and terrifying vision of the future. And he needed Daniel to interpret it. I will not go into the vision, but I want to go to the interpretation. 36, this is the dream, and we will tell thee the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings. For the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, and the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, hath he given into thine hand. And he... And as iron that breaketh all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou saw the feet of toes, and part of potter's clay, and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron, for as much as thou sowest the iron mixed with merry clay. And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sowest iron mixed with merry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. Verse 44, and in the days of these kings, glory to God, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people. In other words, this is the last bus stop. This is it. And this is what we have received. That's why it says we have received a kingdom that will not be moved. This is, the, this is it. This is that kingdom. The kingdom shall never be destroyed. And it shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. That is what we have received. That is what we have received. A kingdom that will not be moved. It will not be handed over to somebody else. It will not be destroyed. It will consume every other kingdom. How much have you consumed? Everywhere you are, say, I've received a kingdom which we shall not be moved. I'm here now. The kingdom of God has come. The kingdom of heaven has come. We will not be moved. We will take over all the kingdoms. All authorities in this place, we consume them all. We have started because the Lord said to Jesus, sit down at my right hand till I make your enemies thy footstool. When is that happening? Now! That's what we are doing. That's what we are doing. And that's what pastor is teaching us. Look, you've got to understand what has been committed to you. You have received a kingdom. You have received the kingdom. You must operate the kingdom. It's a kingdom that will not be destroyed. It can't be destroyed where you are. Say, no, <laughs> not where I am. It will not be moved. It will not be replaced. Oh, in the book of Revelations, the angel cried out. He says, now shall the kingdoms of this world become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he will reign forever. All realms, all dominions, all authorities shall become the kingdom of our God and of his Christ. The kingdom is spreading. It will not be moved. It's spreading. Rather, it's spreading. Do you understand? Look at Mark chapter 4 and verse 30. And he said, Whereunto shall we liken the kingdom of God? And with what shall we compare it? It is like a grain of mustard seed, which when it is sown in the earth, is less than all the seeds that be in the earth. But when it is sown, it groweth up and becometh greater than all herbs. Hallelujah. And shooteth out great branches so that the fowls of the air may lodge under the shadow of it. Such is the kingdom of God. It takes over. It spreads. It dominates. Now the kingdom is where others take refuge because it has consumed everyone. Glory be to God. Luke chapter 13, verse 20. And again he said, Whereunto shall I liken the kingdom of God? It is like leaven which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till the whole was leavened, a little bit in a place. Like just you entering that company, the kingdom of heaven has come. <laughs> just you. Just you and your family moved into that estate. The kingdom of heaven has come. The kingdom of heaven has come. The Lord Jesus said to the disciples, he said, go and preach the kingdom. Go and announce. And he said, now as you go, heal the sick. Because they go together. The announcement of the kingdom goes with the healing miracles, the testimony, the demonstration of power is part of the kingdom. 
So as we're preparing for healing streams, we are doing what? We are announcing the kingdom. The kingdom of heaven has come. Glory to God. He's come to this hospital. He's come to this school. He's come to this estate. He's come to this town or to this city. The kingdom has come. Glory to God. And it's through you. Through you. Say, I've received a kingdom that cannot be yours. I am the kingdom. Wherever I am. Oh, glory to God. Number four. We preach and advance the kingdom of God here on earth. It's our responsibility. We advance the kingdom. We push it forward. Whether we're in politics, whether we're in law, are we in the health sector? Are we in education? Do we have families? We advance the kingdom. One person at a time is a spiritual kingdom. Glory to God. Acts chapter 28 and verse 31. I just want you to see the mindset of the apostles. They preach the kingdom of God. Several times in the book of Acts, you hear them say, they preach the kingdom. They preach the kingdom. Jesus said, preach the kingdom. Do we really preach the kingdom? We preach a part of it. But we must teach God's people about the kingdom. Oh, hallelujah. It says, Paul, verse 31, preaching the kingdom of God and teaching those things which concern the Lord Jesus Christ with all confidence, no man forbidding him. <laughs> No man forbids us as we preach the kingdom. We preach the kingdom. We announce the kingdom with signs and wonders following. Oh, hallelujah. With signs and wonders following. Look at the book of Gospel of Luke. Luke chapter 9. Verse 1, then he called his 12 disciples together and gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. Remember, we said it's a kingdom of power. We operate the power of God, the authority of God. And Pastor told us the importance of exercising that kingdom with regard to casting out devils. Breaking the influence of devils over people, over leaders over individuals, because Satan uses them a lot of times. Of course, all the time, he uses people to advance his work. A lot of terrible things happen. You know, there was a, a testimony we, we showed on the first day of Healing Streams, and I'll give you a part that, that wasn't in that story. This young girl had this demonic oppression, and the devils would take her out of her body. The girl would collapse, and her spirit would be moving about. In the, in the, you know, and she's watching her body. She's trying to get back in, but she won't be able to get back in. In fact, the day pastor prayed for her, she said she was moving about the auditorium. Did you hear when she said that? Now, something that wasn't in that video, she said twice. By the time she came back to her body, she had tried to kill herself. While she was not in control of her, of herself, she, 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 she found herself about to jump out of the car on the bridge when she came back into herself. So demons make people do terrible things. And that's why Jesus said, the first thing he said, if you believe, you will cast out them. Because he knew the origin of many terrible things in the world is demonic activity. So the Lord said, he gave them power and authority over all devils and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. Many times those two go together. To preach the kingdom and to heal the sick. To preach the kingdom and to heal the sick. So we advance the kingdom. We preach the kingdom and we heal the sick. And we cast out devils. Glory to God. And pastor told us how to frustrate the work of devils from the lives of people. To cut off their influence to render them unable to act on such people until salvation can get to them. Glory to God. Luke chapter 12 and verse 31. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Luke chapter 12, verse 31. I want to read it from the Amplified. 
It says, only aim at and strive for and seek his kingdom. And all these things shall be supplied to you. In other words, seek the advancement of the kingdom. Strive for the advancement of God's kingdom and his righteousness. It says, anything you need will be added to you. Glory to God. That is our focus. We have to realize and understand that our life is not about what is convenient for us. Once we are okay, everything is fine. No, there's a kingdom to establish. Glory to God. There's a purpose <clears throat> for Christ's coming. There's an assignment. He has done it, but we are to complete the rest. Do you understand? He has, we are to complete in 2,000 years. Reign until his enemies are made his footstool. We are to push the kingdom. Do you know that everywhere you are, the kingdom of God has come there? Has come there. So you have to ask yourself, how far has the kingdom gone in my family, in my profession, in my neighborhood? How far? How far? And then what are you going to do about it? First of all, you start with prayers. You've got to pray. Pray. The Lord Jesus prayed. And now we have keys to the kingdom. We will use those keys. <laughs> Whatever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So we have to do that. Glory to God. We have to use our words. And then Pastor taught us that the, the demonstration of the power of the kingdom is by words. You must speak words of power. Glory to God. And the reason why we must pray, because if there's disruption and disorder in the society, you cannot even, you can't even have enough peace to do the things you want to do. The preaching of the gospel becomes frustrated when there is disorder, civil dis disorder. So we pray, glory to God. We insist on God's will and God's purpose, glory to God. How many are ready to do more with the kingdom? You're ready to do more, to operate the kingdom. To discover why do you come to church? Because in church you are exposed to the mysteries, the secrets of the kingdom. They are secrets. Not everything is according to the school you went to. You say, I don't know what happened. I went to Harvard University, but uh, I don't know. Have I not seen professors who their life work was to cure deafness, but they are deaf? They are cancer specialists, but they will die of cancer. How far will education take you? There are mysteries. There are secrets. There are things. Life is spiritual. It's not all about one plus one and all. No, no, no. There are spiritual things. There's a realm of the spirit to engage and to operate in. Glory to God. Speak in tongues for a moment. Speak in tongues for a moment. And begin to talk to the Lord about your role in the kingdom. It expands in the kingdom. Declare that you have a desire for knowledge. To know how to operate the kingdom. Begin to declare the expansion of the kingdom in your own world. In your own world, how far the kingdom is going to go. What you are going to do.
and just keep talking to the Lord. If you are here today and you're not yet born again, and today you want to know Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, and become a part of the kingdom, a possessor of the kingdom, I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and I want to pray with you and lead you to Christ the Bible way. So if you are here today and you're not yet born again, can you raise your hand in a way that I can see you from here? Raise your hand. Thank you so much for those hands. Whether you're on the stands, whether you're at the back, on the ground, either side, raise your hand. Next, I'd like you to stand up because I want you to come to the front to meet me here. Get up on your feet and an usher will find you and bring you straight to the front. Come now, everyone that wants to be born again, come. born again is very simple. The Bible says if you believe in your heart that God raised up Jesus from the dead and you declare with your mouth that he is Lord of your life, you will be saved. So I'm going to lead you now to say those words of faith in Christ Jesus and you'll be born again. Would you put one hand on your chest and say these words after me, but mean them with all your heart and God will hear you. Say, oh Lord God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus died for my sins and that you raised him from the dead for my justification. So right now, I declare with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord of my life. From this moment forward, my sins are washed away and I receive eternal life the life of God into my heart. I'm saved. I'm born again. From today, I'm a child of God. Glory to God. Let me pray for you. Precious Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, thank you for these wonderful brothers and sisters who have just given their hearts to Christ. From today, the name of Jesus is named upon them and they are translated into the kingdom of your dear son. Thank you, Lord, because each one of them will fulfill your plan and purpose for their lives. They will bring forth fruit for the kingdom and they will be ready for the rapture of the church. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise the Lord, hallelujah. Congratulations, as simple as it is, and it has to be simple, you are now born again. I'm gonna be asking one of my leaders to take you to another place where they will minister to you and share some thoughts with you and let you know what to do and what to expect now that you are born again. 
But I want to tell you two important things that you must keep in mind. The first one is that you must always come to church. Okay? No matter how you feel, no matter what happened the day before, what did not happen, come to church. When you get to church, everything will be all right. Okay? Then secondly, I would like you to take part in the foundation school. We have a school for young Christians like you. It holds just for about 40 minutes after every service. You are supposed to take the classes for six weeks. You can start today. If you're not ready today, you can start next week, but you can actually start today. And in that class, we're going to teach you some basic things, foundational things, so that you can start your Christian life on the right foundation. So consider starting today after we are done with ministering to you. Okay, over there is Dickness Kathy. Please go with her. She will attend to you with her team. God bless you. I'm a new to God. Now, in about less than three weeks, we're going to be having the healing streams, live healing services with our man of God, Pastor Chris. Yes, and I'm sure that having been a part of several editions, you know what to do. You are better prepared to reach others. Remember, so much depends on you. In the book of Mark, let me just pick that for you from the scriptures. In the book of Mark chapter 1 and verse 32. It says, Now when it was evening, after the sun had set. Okay, I'm reading from the Amplified. Let me read it from King, from King James. Now when, and at even when the sun did set, they brought unto him all that were diseased and all them that were possessed with devils. And all the city was gathered together at the door. In other words, they brought the whole city to where Jesus was. That's what we're going to be doing with the healing streams. Glory to God. We're going to bring the whole city everywhere to Jesus. And thank God for this platform of healing streams. It's as much as they are coming to him, he's also coming to them wherever they are. But it's important that we realize that just like these people, they knew that it was the people. He didn't say Jesus went to gather people. The people brought others that were sick to Jesus. We must bring the sick. It's only the sick that attends the program that will be healed. So everyone must be a part of publicizing the program, inviting others, setting up places, healing centers, all across your world for this program. Verse 34, it says, and he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffer not the devils to speak because they knew him. I want you to watch a video of one of our sisters in Swaziland. The activities that she's, she carried out for previous healing streams, enriching people, bringing people, setting up centers, and the testimonies that she has. Because we are, we're sharing about the kingdom of God operating the kingdom. This is one way that you can expand God's kingdom in your world. The preaching of the kingdom is incomplete without the healing of the sick. So you have a personal responsibility. Everyone must be involved in publicizing the program. Everybody, everybody around you must hear about the program. You have your Healing to the Nations magazines. You have your car stickers, your chest tags. Don't be a spectator at the program. Say, hey, what we saw, what we saw. No, what did you do to make healing possible for somebody else? So I want you to watch this video. Please pay attention. It's about 13 minutes, so it's a little bit... It's fairly, well, not really long, but just 13, 13 minutes. Watch it and ask yourself, what are you going to do in this November healing streams? Please play the video. Oh, glory, <laughs> glory to Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Yet again, in the next 20 days, Bottle Security you, Lord Jesus. will be live with the man Thank of God you, at the sixth edition of the healing streams live healing services what are your expectations oh think about it what are your expectations 
You know, the Healing Streams Life Healing Services brings wholeness. We always say it. It's not just for people who are sick in their bodies, True. who have any form of sickness. It's another opportunity for us to be moved to the next level. And I'm sure a lot of partners will understand this. True. Every time you give for the Healing Streams Life Healing Services, there's a transportation. First go. I, I wonder if this is what it catapultation. <laughs> <laughs> you are literally catapulted to the next level. First so go. don't miss this opportunity to be financially involved, to partner, particularly as we are preparing for this Healing Streams Life Healing Services. It's another opportunity and avenue for you to see the manifestation of the Spirit of God in your life like never before. So I'm ready. I'm ready for that next level, and I'm sure you are as well. Oh, praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, we have another caller. Wonderful. Hello, you are welcome to the Healing Streams Testimonies Live. Hello. How are you doing? Oh, fine. Thank you. Thank praise you for God. having me. Thank you. You're welcome. Please tell us your name and where you're calling from. My name is Nelly Shambira, and I'm calling from uh, Manzini in Swaziland. Wow. Swaziland. All the way Swaziland. Welcome. Yeah. All right. So talk to us. What's in your mind? Uh, the Healing Streams is on my mind, and uh, I had a, a viewing center, and I recorded a lot of outstanding testimonies and this just has been what's on my mind. Thank you. Oh, glory to God. So how has Hallelujah. been, or what was your experience in the previous editions of the Healing Streams? For me, it's been um, miracle after miracle. Um, you know, we, we have seen miracles. Um, we participated in um, healing programs with Pastor Chris and we've seen on TV, but uh, having a miracle taking place in the doing center that you are hosting and you actually seeing it is a totally different uh, thing altogether and it's been uh, life changing. My life has never been the same ever since I started hosting uh, the Healing Streams Life Healing Centers. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> that you, is Lord. truly beautiful, Nelly. So, what would you like to say to.
Ja. 